on today's show, a 1920s house with a new lease on life in Miami. Hi, I'm Joe Ruggiero, and welcome to Homes Across America. If you're like me, I'm sure you've seen a house that you instantly loved but couldn't buy for one reason or another. Well, one lucky Florida man saw the house he wanted, and it was his in a matter of days. Meet Edward Nieto, and hear how love at first sight led to a renovation labor of love. A few years ago, designer Edward Nieto was looking to move from his Miami apartment. He drove around neighborhoods to see what was available, even before contacting a realtor. He knew exactly what he was looking for. A two-story Mediterranean-style house with some character and charm. One day, a small house caught his eye, which he thought would be perfect. I drove by. There was nobody here. I looked in the windows and I said this is it this is my house the next day um, they posted a sign that it was for sale and that day I said I want this house lock stock and barrel so I put a, an, a bid in and I got it and that was it the house was built in 1927 and in the years since it had never changed or been updated this might have made some buyers wary but not Edward you know, this was untouched. It was a virgin house, I call it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I could, I could work with the palette and add to the palette instead of taking away from the palette, you know, in a sense. I mean, I saw a lot of houses uh, in between this process also that um, had been, the kitchens were done, but there weren't the kitchens that I would have kept. So I felt that, you know, this was a challenge. You know, to really get to the nooks and crannies of the whole situation and just like make something that was not beautiful, beautiful. Once he took ownership, he immediately began renovating the house, starting with the front door. Edward centered the door on the structure and replaced the old door with a pair of curved wooden ones. The realignment of the entrance now allows for a more gracious entry into the home. I didn't want this to be a typical Florida home. I wanted it to feel like you were somewhere else when you walked into my home or, or pulled up into my driveway. You know, I wanted it to be inviting and that you were refreshed by the fact that you weren't going into some a typical Miami or South Florida uh, or Florida home. And I don't feel it is. I feel it's very special. It's got a lot of detail, a lot of charm and a lot of character. A lot of charm and character is an understatement. Edward's distinctive style has transformed a faded gem into a sparkling jewel. I think the details is what makes the overall picture. Like I said before, the palette was bare and I added to the details to the palette. So I wanted a little bit of, I, I like an eclectic feeling. I don't necessarily feel that you have to have everything, you know, match and everything be of the same. I like a mixture of things that gel and blend. What makes it all work is a unifying sense of color and understated luxury. The colors I chose for the house were based on the, on the painting, which were burgundy, sage green, and creams, uh, and purples. Uh, and that, it really, I bought the painting, and then the colors came from that painting. And the painting was painted in Morocco, and uh, I fell in love with it. And um, I said, these are the colors that I want my house to be. Then I found the rug, and then I created the palette around the painting. In addition to his eye for color, Edward also has an eye for background details. I like beautiful things, and I felt the house had its original character uh, from 1927, but they, they omitted a lot of the wonderful details that I felt that I put in, like the, the moldings and things like that, you know, in the fireplace, um, you know. I feel that if I would have done this house in 1927, um, I would have definitely done this at that time. The andirons are also a marvelous touch and feature faces of laughing men. Other details include refurbished original tile floors and a gothic style wall stencil in the dining room. 
in the stencil. It was just something offbeat, off color that I wanted to add to it, just to give it a little detail. And that's really the main reason for it, because it really has no rhyme or reason when you think about it. <laughs> but I, I like to do things that are a little offbeat, that, th that throw a little left curve into it. The dining room is an elegant mix of old and new. The richly upholstered dining chairs are Edward's design. They seem right at home atop another of the original tile floors. Two portraits grace one wall. They came with the house and depict ancestors of the home's original owner. Just off the dining room is the newly remodeled kitchen. Here Edward really worked a miracle. He added counters of polished granite and designed wonderful cabinetry. Even the stove is framed by the white wood. It features an open storage area underneath for pots and pans. This one-of-a-kind kitchen design is enhanced by hand-forged metal drawer poles. Edward's clever touch is also seen as you head upstairs. He's added a mural of a sky to the ceiling of the stairwell. At the top of the stairs is the master suite. Here a stately four-poster bed shares space with a sleek wall unit Edward designed. A wall was removed between two bedrooms to create this room and the master bath. The master bath includes a round window over the new built-in vanity that was installed during renovation. In the bedroom, part of the back wall was blown out to make way for French doors and a small balcony. The balcony overlooks the backyard with its sparkling pool. I like the view from my balcony because I really get a good perspective of um, my pool, my yard, my garden. The pool surround is a copy of something Edward had seen in England. Concrete squares are interspersed with squares of grass, creating a whimsical checkerboard. This makes sense in the heat of the Florida sun. It's cooler to walk on grass than hot concrete. He also gave the pool a magical touch with his own fanciful tile mosaics. He even hooked up a playful fountain which sprays into the pool. I don't like large houses and this is still an open space, but it gives you, you know, your privacy where you can go and separate yourself and have your own little space. And when I wake up in the morning and I look out my balcony and, see, and I see my yard, uh, it gives me such a, a, a peaceful feeling, a beautiful feeling inside um, that it's been all, all worth it.